the time just to pray together and so but we want to turn this morning to the word of the Lord a few months ago as I began praying for our 30th anniversary uh, you know my background is a, as a teacher and as a writer and in literature and so you know words are my thing right um, and for somebody who's a teacher and a writer all you have to do is spend a little bit of time you can come up with something catchy you can come up with something yeah this sounds good but I really didn't want to do that I really wanted to know what God had for us for this 30th anniversary because it's a big deal times matter to God uh, um, it, uh, uh, anniversaries they matter to God and so this on our 30th anniversary it matters to God and it matters to us as well so I began asking the Lord um, Lord what is your theme for us what is what do you want to say to us? And he began dealing with me, my heart about kind of about light and shining, but I still didn't know there were so many directions. And then uh, about a month and a half before, he really began to direct me to this um, as our theme. So let your light shine is our theme. I believe it's from the Lord. And we're going to look this morning for just a short time. Let me check my, oh, I don't have my, Stephen, would you give, <laughs> give me a, I can, let's see, I'm going to put it right there so I don't look so obvious. How about that? <laughs> right there but you see when I look down so we're just going to look for a short time this morning um, and if you have your Bibles you can look with me and I want to remind you of how we started last week uh, we t last week we started about uh, Jesus' teaching on the, uh, he's th during the Sermon on the Mount and he starts out by saying you're the salt of the earth and we talked about this last week and then we said okay this week we would talk about you're the light of the world so this week we're going to talk about being the light of the world look with me at Matthew 5 14 and 15 you are the light of the world a city situated on a hill cannot be hidden no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket but rather on a lampstand and it gives light for all who are in the house and then the part that we'll get to next week but not so much this this week is in verse 16 in the same way in the same way as a light on as a uh, the light of the world a city on a hill and a lamp in the same way let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. So here we have our, uh, our theme. Let me come back to that. So this is where we'll be looking at this morning. So I want to ask you a question as we look very briefly um, this morning for just a little while. Uh, we're going to talk about light, a city on a hill. So here's your question. You know, sometimes I, I give you sort of short quizzes. What city is known as the city of lights. <laughs> eh. <laughs> Isaac. <laughs> eh. <laughs> but that's a good. But that's a good. That's a good guess. One day it will be. Uh, I'm sorry. Don't be so spiritual. Be less spiritual. What is known as the city of lights? Mariage. Ah, Kim says Paris in the back. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So hang on. Those of you that are claiming Hong Kong, stay with me. And Isaac, you're absolutely right. Um, one day, Jerusalem is the city on a hill. Its light will shine for the whole world. So you all said Hong Kong first, so you're way ahead of me. Um, in natural terms, uh, Paris was known, is known as the city of lights or the city of light. And it began in the 1600s with Louis XIV. Um, the, they'd gone through a long period of, s of civil unrest and wars and things like that, and he wanted to improve the city, and so he added a whole bunch more policemen. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but anyhow, he added a whole bunch more policemen, and then he instituted lights on all of the street corners. So Paris was one of the first cities to have street lights in all of Europe. And then at the same time, to, uh, to fight against crime, he asked all the residents of Paris at night in the evening, would you light a lamp, and an oil lamp or a candle, and put it in your window so that the light will shine? And that would make crime go down. So Paris was known as the city of light, and that's where it came from. However, some of you immediately jumped when we talked about city of light, and you said, what city? Hong Kong. Okay, so let's talk um, about Hong Kong for just a little bit. And you are right. Uh, do you know that Hong Kong, in all the cities of the world, let me get the, let me get the let me get the the uh, uh, figures exactly right. Hong Kong emits at least one thousand times more light than the international average. Did you know that? So if you want to put it this way, Hong Kong is the brightest city in the world. 
um, as I was studying and as I was looking at it, it to me it was kind of interesting. Instead of saying it positively, you know what the, how they said it? They said it really negatively, and they talked about light pollution. Um, and, um, but I will tell you, you, I, you know, I, I lived in China, in northern China, for about 10 years before I came to Hong Kong. When I came to Hong Kong, I looked at Hong Kong, and I thought, oh, this is amazing. Keith would know that because he was there, and some of you were there in the early years, too. Beijing in the north, it was just dark, even when the lights were on, right? The lights were so, so, so dim. And then I came to Hong Kong, and I looked around, and I thought, this is amazing. A friend of mine visited. She was a, a mathematics professor from the university where I was teaching, and she looked around the city in the evening, around the harbor, and you know what she said? One of her first comments. She looked around and she said, there are so many lights. There are so many lights. And that was her, that was her impression of Hong Kong. And I certainly felt that way too because, you know, uh, you all know I'm really a country girl at heart. Um, and I'm way out. You heard all those crickets and things as, as mom and dad were speaking. Uh, that's daytime. You should hear it at nighttime. Um, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when the only light, because we live way out in the country and we don't have neighbors, the only light is the moon or the stars. And so it's, it's dark out there unle unless, you know, the moon is really bright. Then it's really beautiful as it shines on the lake. So we want to talk this morning about uh, Jesus says to us, you're the light of the world and you are, what does it say? It says you're a city on a hill. Okay, so we understand that as we look at that. A city, city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. Sometimes uh, where I live out in Taipo, I climb the mountain behind my house and because I want to see uh, a meteor shower. I have been influenced by Kenneth and Letty, who really are amateur uh, geologists is not the right word. Astronomers, that's the right word. R wrong direction. And uh, they know, oh, Pastor Jennifer, there's a comet. Uh, that's, there's a comet in the sky. Or there's a meteor shower or things like that. And with eagerness, I climb the mountain and I look, but I see nothing, partly because I'm really ignorant about these things, but also because on one side is Shenzhen or Xiongshui, and on the other side is Taipo, shining brightly, shining brightly. So there's not a lot that I see, but I could imagine lights on top of a hill. And when Jesus talks that way, he could, they really understood what he was saying because he was talking to people had where there was no artificial light except for some oil lamps or some candles at night. So when Jesus said, you're a city on a hill um, and you're, you're the light of the world, all of them understood exactly what Jesus meant. This was a word picture that they immediately understood. Um, and it would be a dramatic light shining in darkness. And this is what Jesus said we are. So that reminds me about Philippians 2, 14, and 14 through 16. Look at what Paul writes as he says we are. He says, verse 14, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a crooked and twisted generation. Hold firmly to the word of life. Depending on your translation, it also says holding out the words of life. That's another way to look at it. And so here, this here is this word picture for us this morning. Why does Jesus say we're salt? We talked about this last week. Why does Jesus say you're the light of the world? You're like a city on a hill. Jesus says we are this, and Jesus makes us this because we live in a world that is dark. We live in a world that is twisted. We live in a world that is crooked. And then Paul is inspired to say, hold firmly to the word of life. And you can take that any way that you want to. There's more than one translation. One is that you're the light of the world and you are shining. And the word of life that came into your heart. Do you remember when the word of life came into your life? Do you remember it? Do you remember when it drove out the darkness and light entered your life? and you were brought out of the kingdom of darkness, and you were brought into the kingdom of life. That was the word of life. Jesus talks about being the life and the light of the world. Remember that. Those of you that struggle at times, those of you that are going through hard times, hold on to the word of life. Hold on to what Jesus spoke into your heart that transformed your life and that changed you and brought you out of darkness and brought you into light and made you to shine in a dark world. Jesus says, Jesus says 
that we shine like bright lights in a crooked and twisted generation. And this is this picture that Jesus gives us this morning. So as I think about this, I think of the celebration that's coming up very, very soon. What's coming up on Tuesday night and Wednesday? There we go. It's the Mid-Autumn Festival. And so we think about that because I live out in the village. Now, some of you are city kids. I know we're in Hong Kong, but, you know, I'm still a, I'm a village girl. I'm in Taipo, and not only am I in Taipo, I'm in Kaolinghang, which is way out right into the edge, edge of the mountain. And so it's still, even though there are a lot of lights, it's still kind of dark there. And I love on mid-autumn eve to go up to the roof. I'm on the top floor, and I look down, and I always see parents and kids walking through the village, and they have their lanterns on a stick, right? And they're walking around with their lantern, and you can see the lights kind of bobbing through the village, through the dark pathways. But me, I didn't grow up in Hong Kong. I grew up in Singapore a long time ago. And in Singapore, back before there were fancy lanterns, how many of you, parents, how many of your kids are going to have lanterns with like little battery lights or little LED or things like that? Ah, that's so modern. <laughs> I had one of these lanterns, and one of my favorite things to do, mom would take us, Singapore, years ago, la, before many of you were born, and we would go to those, uh, those of you that are some Singaporeans, we would go to those shops that had these lanterns made of cellophane, right? Colored cellophane hanging down, so artistic. And what mom would let us do as kids, we would come there and we would look up and she would let us choose our favorite lantern. And then we would get the lantern and it would be made with cellophane and pieces of rattan, right? It would be done like that. And then inside, there would be no battery operated, no LED, no LCD. It was a candle, right? It was a candle. So of course what happened is I swung my lantern <laughs> with the candle. <laughs> I <laughs> I always burned my lantern, <laughs> I, uh, and I'd be so sad, and the cell phone would just be like, <laughs> and it would be, it would be gone. But I was thinking about that as we think about lights and shining. I told you this was going to be a simple and a brief message this morning, but I think about that as I think about what Jesus said to us, or I think about this, and I am so sorry if this is controversial. Um, I love them. I, I think they're not good for the environment. I think they're bad for fires on the hills. I don't know, but I live in Kaolinghang, and on the evening, I'll go up on the roof, and I'll look, and out over the valley around Honglok Yun and that whole area, the later it gets in the evening, I'll see the lights of, the si of Honglok Yun, of Kaolinghang, of all of these villages, and then, and then, as people light these, what are they called? What are they called? I had to look it up because I didn't know. Sky lanterns, sky candles, fire balloons, or whatever. People begin to light them, and what do they do? They begin to rise in the dark night sky. And when they rise in the dark night sky, that's when their light shines. When they're in the dark sky, that's when the light goes forth as we see it and as I look at it rise over the whole valley and it goes up high and the higher it goes in the sky into the darker air the more it's noticeable the more I see them the more their light shines through all and I believe that this is what Jesus is talking about when he says we're a city on a hill I believe this is what Jesus is talking about when he says we're a lamp in a room that's dark. It doesn't go under a bushel. It doesn't go under a basket, but we put it up on something. And where it is dark is where the light is seen. And he has called you and he's called me to be lights that shine in dark places. Sometimes we are in places that are so difficult. Sometimes your work is hard. Sometimes your family is hard. Sometimes your relationships are hard. And brothers and sisters, it is in those places that Jesus says to you, to you, so be encouraged this morning, you're a city on a hill. 
You're a lamp in a dark room. And where it is dark is where you shine. And it's not your own light, but it's the light that Jesus gives us. It says, uh, look with me, Matthew, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. Because the purpose of the light of a light is to provide light to see. And everybody understood Jesus when he was saying this. When we look at this, we don't understand it so well, but in the time of Jesus, most of the rooms, uh, how many of you want your own space and you think you don't have enough space in Hong Kong? How many of you? Yeah. Okay, I agree with you. Even I am one person in an apartment, but in the time of Jesus, almost all houses, unless you were really, really wealthy, all houses were one room. That's it. One room, so imagine that. Next time we complain about space, let's think about that. So when Jesus gives this example, everybody understood what it meant because they would light a lamp and then instead of putting it on the ground, they would put it up on a little stand and it was just one light, but it would light the whole room, it would light the whole house, and it would light it for everybody in the whole room, everybody that was in the house, they would see. I didn't really understand this verse until last year when I was back in the U.S. and I got stuck uh, because of all the COVID restrictions and flights stopped. And uh, if you'll remember, I was with mom and dad. It was during Easter time and a terrible storm system went through where we were. And um, in within a two-day period, 140 tornadoes struck the south. Uh, there's much more to that. The strongest one was recorded at 310 kilometers per hour the strongest one. So you can imagine how strong. And it went through and it struck us as well. I think something that you all don't know is, let me tell you something about being in a house with old Christians. I was there, right? I'm not so, so young, but I want to live. <laughs> so the storm came through and because of where we are, the tornado uh, siren started. It was kind of scary because it was 11 midnight, 11 to midnight. The siren started like that and we could hear it. It was up the road and then I checked to the radar and it said that the tornado was about a mile away, a little more than a kilometer. So I hop out of bed, I go running to the bedroom. Now remember dad has a stroke and he can't walk, he's in a wheelchair. So I go, it's in the dark and I say, okay, let's go because I was going to put them in the golf cart. They have a little golf, golf cart. Of course mom is blind, right? I was going to get them in the wheelchair, put them in the golf cart, and then drive them down to the other house and put them in the basement. So it's dark. I'm running. The tornado siren is going. And, and I get to the set. Okay, let's go. Dad's in bed, covers up. And in the dark, he says, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> and, and mom says, I'm not leaving dad. <laughs> And I said, we got to go, the tornado's coming. And you know what they said? Godly parents. They said, Jennifer, we've already talked about it. We're old and we're ready to go. If something happens to us, we'll go to heaven anyhow. <laughs> but you've got to go back and pester the church, so you go hide in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, go, we mean it. So what did I do? I abandoned them. <laughs> and... I grabbed the candle and the whatever, and I went running through the rain to the basement. I was like, oh, Lord, keep them safe. What's gonna and I, and I, I sat there in the basement for an hour, and finally, after whatever, and then I got up and went back, and they were still there, and they were, they were sound asleep, you know. <laughs> I, I, think, I think they had been hoping. They had been hoping for a tornado, to, you know, just to go on, go on to heaven. That's what happens when you live with old Christians who are ready for heaven right? That's what happens. <laughs> so that tells you something you didn't know before. <laughs> but they said, but you got to get back to Hong Kong. It's like, okay, okay, okay. So here I am. I'm back. Um, but it hit us as well. The tornado did. It, it took, the house was okay, but it broke down trees and things. But it knocked out all of our electricity and all of our water for almost a week. It was horrible. And the first day, the first night, we were not prepared. I thought, no problem, because we're still talking about light, right? We're still talking about this. Um, and as we, as we look at this, so I had a candle. So I had a candle and matches for the first night. And so darkness falls. And I got the candle, and I got the match, one candle, and then I put it in the fireplace down low, down low. And we sat there. We could barely see anything <laughs> because it was one candle. It was really low. And then we realized 
That's the wrong way to do it. So I got the candle, lifted it up, and put it high on the mantle. And then there was light instead. And truly, when we went through that experience, um, I began to understand, oh, this is what Jesus talks about when he says, no one takes a light and puts it under whatever, but you put it up on a lampstand. And then on that lampstand, then it gives light for everybody to see. Sometimes we think where we are individually, sometimes we think as a church, because we're not a big church, we think our light is so small, our shine is so limited, don't we? We feel that way. And what I want to say to you to encourage you this morning is this. That's not what Jesus says about us. That's not how Jesus looks at us. Because the light that shines from you, the light that shines from this church is not from your own power. It's not from your own strength. It's not from your own resources. It's not from all that you have but it's from Jesus. It's from Jesus. And Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. And then Jesus says to you and me, you're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. Before Lighthouse came to be more than 30 years ago, there was no church here in this building. This was a, uh, is a commercial building. I don't even know what was here on the second floor. Some of you old timers, do you know what was here on the second floor? I don't know what was here. There are a few of you. Uh, maybe Roy knows and maybe a few others. So he here it was. There was no church. And then uh, Lighthouse came to be, and they rented, and then they bought, and God has done wonderful things. And um, I was in China at the time. I have no idea why they, s why they chose Lighthouse, except there are a lot of churches named Lighthouse, and there are a lot of church groups named Lighthouse. Now some of you know this, but a lot of you don't know this about Lighthouse Church. But they, I'm sure because they're godly people, they prayed and they felt that this was the name for this church that meets here now. So a year or two passed, and somebody came back for a visit who had been in Hong Kong, and they asked about this church, and they said, Lighthouse? That's the name of the church? Where is it? Where is it located? And they were told, it's here, just off Nathan Road, it's on Hillwood Road, and it's whatever, and the name of the church is Lighthouse Ministries International, Lighthouse, Lighthouse International Church. And you know what the person said? They said, praise the Lord. They said, every time I have come to visit Hong Kong, I have walked up and down Nathan Road praying. And my prayer has been, oh God, as they walked up and down right on this stretch out here, oh God, oh God, which way? I'm pointing in the wrong direction, right? Anyhow, Nathan Road, wherever it is. They prayed, oh God, Raise up a lighthouse for yourself in this place for your glory. And brothers and sisters, that's where the name came from. But brothers and sisters, you are the answer to people's prayers. You are the fruit of people's labors. And so my question to us is, how about us now? Other people shined their light and other people invested, and other people prayed, but the light lasts only as long, and the light shines only as long as there are people who are shining. I don't care what your age is. I'm so glad the youth are with us and some of the older ones as well. Your light shines also. Let me give you an example. This morning, Angela, who's right here, uh, this is Jackie's former uh, charge, if you will, that was up here right in the front. Her mom is here today. And they are, they're not from a, f they're, they're from a family that's very different from ours, but Angela started coming and she loves Jesus and she has a Bible. And she writes notes and she writes prayers and she says, I want my, I want my family to know Jesus. I want my family to love Jesus. You can shine a light, whatever your age, whatever your abilities or lack of them, because the light that shines is Jesus. The light that shines is Jesus. And so as we look ahead and as we go ahead, I, there are so many more verses, um, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to skip, I think I'm going to skip most of them. 
Um, but let me just give us just a few as we come, as we come to a close this morning. I told you it was going to be short. Take a note. This is the shortest message I will ever preach at Lighthouse, <laughs> except for maybe next week when we have one hour. But I want us, I want to remind you of what you were, what I was, and what we are now. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. And you were once alienated and hostile in mind because of your evil actions. But he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. You and I were once part of the kingdom of darkness and he's brought us into light. So when Jesus says no one takes a lamp and hides it under a lampstand. What did he mean as we come to a close this morning? What did he mean? What does that mean to you and to me? I want to ask you something. You're a Christian this morning, so the light of Jesus is shining through you. But my question is, how far is that light shining? Or are we very, very satisfied with just, I'm a Christian and I know I'm going to heaven? Are we very satisfied with our church as we are? We're a good church. We hear the word. We're a family church. We're a friendly church. We're happy. Or are we thinking about what Jesus has for us, which is not only that we have light, but that that light shines wherever we are. It's the plan of Jesus that you and I shine our lights wherever we are. We shine in our families. We shine in our workplace. We shine wherever we are by our lives and by our words. Are we shining? Are we shining? Or are we putting our lamp under a basket? Because if I'm just happy, yeah, I'm fine. I know I'm going to heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then I'm putting my, I'm putting my, my light under, a, under a, a, a basket. Years ago, um, I had a friend who was, he, he went to China before I did. You know that I lived in China for about 10 years. I was thinking about this example um, about we are, we are the light of the world. We are to shine. And this was in the early, early years um, up north. And so, you know, some of us really know in the early years, it was very different. It was tough. And we had to be, it was just not easy. So this was in the early 80s. And he went in first and of course was shining his light, was shining his light. And then he came back for another year and he was shining his light. And in that second year, uh, he had flown back in and he was in Shanghai and he was staying in the hotel before he went to the, s to the place where he was gonna be teaching. And he said he looked and another group had come in to the hotel, obviously first time in the country, very first time in the country. And so he took one look and he could tell they're Christians. Yay! Have you ever looked at somebody and you thought, there's something different about this person? And you know what, brothers and sisters? That's the way it's supposed to be. Really. That's, that's how it should be. Uh, the people may not always know, oh, you're a Christian, but there, give, give it some time. There should be something, there should be a light shining out, out of our lives that people say, well, there's something different. Like the, uh, like the lady we told you about last week when Amy and I were sitting at the table on Ruby Tuesdays. Why are you so happy? Um, I think we're going to see her today. Uh, and I'll tell her I talked about her. Um, so anyhow, so my friend Tim looked at this couple, at this, this team that had come in and he could tell they're Christians. And so he went up to say something to them uh, because they were, you know, he's a Christian too. And he said they looked at him and they're like, and said nothing and quickly went off in the other direction. So obviously they had been told, don't tell anybody you're a Christian. So I was thinking about that and I was just laughing because you, that was from the Lord to make sure we're still paying attention. But I laughed as my friend Tim told me that because I thought, what do you mean? Don't say anything about being a Christian. People should be able to tell, right? Because we're shining our light. And so Tim didn't say anything. And later in the day, he was walking down the hall, you know, those old long hallways in those, those, uh, the, the Shanghainese hotels. And he said one of the guys from the group was walking along. And as he was walking along, he was humming or whistling a Christian song. I think it was an old Keith Green song for those of us that are Old Testament Christians. And he was humming. And Tim looked at him and he said, oh, 
I love that song. That's one of my favorite songs. And the guy thought, <gasps> first day in the country, and I've blown my cover. <laughs> I've blown my cover. Now they know we're Christians. And we, we laugh at that. But you know what, brothers and sisters? Whether we say something or not, and eventually we do, people should see that our lights are shining. People should see that our lights are shining. And my prayer for us as Christians individually is that our lights are shining. Next week I'll tell you some other stories. We're going to continue this. And my prayer for Lighthouse is not just that we as a church are comfortable, not just that we're happy together and harmonious, although I pray this for us. I pray for the visitation of the Lord upon us. But brothers and sisters, I pray that the Lord shines through us as well because that's his plan. That's his plan. And so I'm going to leave you with that this morning. That's just a brief encouragement. And next week we're going to continue because this is part of our celebration. We're going to have more things as well. We're going to look at some other verses. But I want to encourage you, let your light shine. It's the light of Jesus. Some of you may feel like, I, I'm so messed up. I'm so weak. I fail so often. I am not worthy to shine for Jesus and I'm going to encourage you more next week with a verse. But what I'm going to say to you is this as we close. Paul said, we have this treasure. And we have this light that shines in fragile earthen vessels. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, that's what we are. We look at Lighthouse, not a huge church, not great resources. But, oh, beloved, the lives that have been transformed Thousands at this point, I believe. Thousands of people that have been brought from darkness to light. Thousands who have developed roots in the Lord Jesus Christ. Some young, some older. This is what it is to be in the family of God. This is what it is to be where the light shines. And I pray that we don't just look back at the good things that God has done, but that you and I look forward and we look ahead at the shining that will come the shine that is yet ahead as the Lord Jesus shines through us. Amen? Amen. Praise.